Welcome into another episode of Locked On Phillies. Today, we're talking about the first sweep of the year for the Phillies. They take all three from the Colorado Rockies, as honestly, they probably should have. But last night got a little bit squirrely, so we'll break down the final game of the series and what the Phillies did so well to get this sweep. Also, we have an interesting situation developing with the starting rotation a good problem to have, and I'll break it down. And also, because it's our first off day in two weeks, I've got some random thoughts on the team that I haven't had a chance to really get into so far. So a lot of stuff on today's episode. You are Locked On Phillies, your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is indeed Locked On Phillies. I'm Connor Thomas, your host. Thank you so much for checking us out. Please make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube. That is the number one way to help us out here on Locked On Phillies. So if you like the content, subscribing is the best way to say that you do, that you enjoy it. Uh, and also, we're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Monopoly Go. Monopoly Go is the best. If you have a competitive side like me, it is a big fan favorite of Monopoly players. Monopoly goes the best. You got to try it out. Uh, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. Join your friends and download Monopoly Go now. Free on the App Store or Google Play. The Phillies knocked back the sweep last night. If you were watching the Sixers and you missed a little bit of it, I'll catch you up on everything you need to know because the Sixers were in the play-in game last night. So taking down the Miami Heat, congrats to them. Shout out to Lock on Sixers. I'm sure they got some great content out there for you, so you can check that out. But we're talking about baseball, and we're talking about three games against the Rockies that resulted in three wins for the Philadelphia Phillies. So that is a very, very good swing. Good swing. Good series. Why did I say swing? I'm thinking about Kyle Schwarber swings, I guess, who homered twice in the game. And the offense seemed to kind of wake up a little bit for the Philadelphia Phillies in this final game of the series. You had some pops of offense at points throughout the series, but 12 hits last night for the Phillies. This is kind of the game we were waiting for offensively, right? 12 hits, seven runs, a couple of home runs mixed in there. I mean, well, couple of home runs off the bat of Kyle Schwarber. You also got one from Trey Turner, which you love to see. Trey Turner and Kyle Schwarber go back to back to start the ball game after the Phillies give up a run in the top of the first leadoff homer by Kyle Schwarber. And then Trey Turner right back after it. So Ryan Feltner, welcome to Citizens Bank Park, buddy. Not an ideal way to start the ball game for him. And it was off and running after that, I mean, really, the Phillies just jumped on the Colorado Rockies early on this one. They scored on the homer by Schwarber, the homer on Turner. Alec Bohm had an RBI double in the first. Brandon Marsh had an RBI single in the first. Future all-star, Brandon Marsh, by the way. But it was 4-1 after the first, and you're kind of like, okay, we're fine. Bottom of the fifth, you got JT Romito, uh, fielder's choice. And it scores Trey Turner, 5-1. to one. And then Schwarber is the second home run of the day in the bottom of the sixth, also off of Ryan Feltner. He does not want to see Schwarber again. That makes it 7-1. to one. And you're like, you're sitting there. Okay, fills are fine. Everything's all good. Nothing to worry about whatsoever. This game is over. Here's where it got a little squirrely, right? You go with Gregory Soto in the eighth inning. And Soto's been all right this year, but he did not have good stuff last night. He just didn't. He couldn't command the fastball. Now, here's what I'll say. I'm not going to make an excuse for him, but I'm going to give you an explanation, right? People always treat this when I bring something up as like, oh, you're making an excuse. He wasn't that good last night. No, he wasn't. I just said that. But the broadcast showed you. They cut to a look. You know, it's the classic sports broadcast shot. You show a shot of the lights above the field because that's the best place to see when there's precipitation coming down. You got a little rain. And it was like misting or spitting a little bit of rain. It wasn't like a downpour, but it, it really started to come in when Gregory Soto was on the mound of the eighth inning. And if you've ever pitched with a wet baseball, it, it's, it's different. Some guys can't pitch in the rain. Like, dude, let me tell you, I hated pitching in – any type of rain, moisture, if I got too sweaty, like anything that messed up the ball. I'm not a major league pitcher, but I'm just saying, like, I know there were some guys that I played with, very good pitchers that didn't mind the rain. I really minded it. So maybe that messed with his ability to control the baseball a little bit, but he did not have his best control. He did not have his best stuff. Uh, Jeff Hoffman comes in in relief of Soto in a big spot. And I mean, he works 
out of it, but he didn't look great either. Gave up a couple more runs. Now, all five earned runs in that inning were credited to Gregory Soto. So he leaves with five earned runs to add to the ERA. And that's not looking pretty right now for him. One outing. I'm not overreacting to that. It just wasn't exactly a confidence-inspiring uh, outing for Gregory Soto. It's not time to relitigate the Gregory Soto trade, uh, not this offseason, but the offseason before, when you send Nick Maton uh, and you send uh, Matt Veerling to Detroit for Gregory Soto. Like, I'm not ready to do that. Would you have still made that trade thing? Because – Frankly, Maton and Veerling are probably not on this team anyway with the talent the Phillies have acquired since. But uh, just one outing. We'll, we'll let it go. Something to keep an eye on. Is Gregory Soto going to have another year where he kind of struggles? But ultimately, ultimately, the Philadelphia Phillies were able to close it down. Jose Alvarado comes in in the ninth, shuts the door. I believe it was Alvarado, right? I was kind of peeking in between the two. Uh, so once you get to the ninth inning, there's nobody on base. Uh, yes, it was Jose Alvarado. My memory does serve. He allowed one hit, had one strikeout, works out in the ninth inning, uh, gets the save, his third of the year, and the Philadelphia Phillies get the sweep. So it got a little bit mm, nerve-wracking there. <laughs> had to be close. It's always got to be interesting. But ultimately, winning is all that matters. I'm starting to sound like Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts, but winning's all that matters in the Philadelphia Phillies won. They won three times in this series. So what did the Philadelphia Phillies do so well? to help them with the sweep. Well, the long ball kind of showed up again, especially in the past two games. Yesterday, JT Romito, or sorry, two days ago, JT Romito and Bryce Harper both went yard. Uh, this game, Kyle Schwarber yard twice, Trey Turner yard once, so five home runs in their past two games, and they're all from the big name guys. Turner, Harper, Romito, Schwarber. Those are the guys that you want to see making big swings and big moments, and not the the home runs were hitting huge moments because at those points it was mostly early in the games. Uh, but that's a really, really good sign. Something that the Phillies also did really well in this series, they played really, really good defense. They did. And I don't think defense is going to become the calling card for this team, but it's definitely a average to above average part of it, and that's more than can be said about Phillies teams of the past couple of years. So how does that factor in? Well, you know the offense is going to come around. You just have to. Rob Thompson said it. We're going to slug. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone's seen that uh, video at this point of him answering a question uh, from a reporter uh, questioning the offense and saying, you know, we're going to slug. If you don't think we're going to slug, you haven't been watching the games. So the offense is going to be there. But when you add a strong offensive team, and well, an elite offensive team, we'll call them like the Philadelphia Phillies, when you add a defense to that, that's average to above average, and then you get the starts you've been getting from this rotation, you become a darn good baseball team, a high 90s wins to maybe even triple digits baseball team. And that is a very good thing for the Philadelphia Phillies this year. I, I'm encouraged by what I saw against the Rockies. I know it's just the Rockies, and we're going to see them against tougher teams this year than Colorado, but I'm cool with what I saw from the Phillies in this series. And speaking of the starting pitching, right? I have an apology to I, I gotta apologize to this guy. Christopher Sanchez's stat line. He went six innings last night, allowed five hits, one run, unearned. He had one walk. He had 10 strikeouts in the game. His ERA is 253. Those numbers, you look at it and you say, oh wow, that guy's had a really good start to the year. And that was a really good outing. But if you remember the past couple outings for Christopher Sanchez. They've been a little iffy, at least in my opinion. He hasn't looked like he's had his best stuff. And I put out a tweet yesterday. And I'll read this tweet for you verbatim because I had a bunch of people responding to it. If Taiwan Walker comes back soon, it might be Christopher Sanchez heading to the pen. He just hasn't looked all that sharp lately. That was in the first inning where there's traffic on the base pass. He had already given up a run early and – he had looked shaky in his last couple of starts, even though the results aren't terrible. He hasn't really like felt like he's got his best stuff right now. And I apologize because he, after that, must have read the tweet and went out there and dominated and looked great the rest of that start. Another great start. The Philadelphia Phillies starters have really only had one bad outing this whole year, and it was Aaron Nola 
on the second day of the season. Every other time, it's just you're getting great start after great start after great start from this rotation. They're unbelievable. They're the best staff by a mile in the National League right now. We'll see if it keeps up a favorable schedule to this point for the Phillies outside of that series with the Braves. But this is just a darn good pitching staff. And I feel really good about where they're at there. But we're going to talk about this in a second. The Phillies are in a very interesting spot with the pitching staff because, like I mentioned that tweet, Taiwan Walker is still on rehab assignment. But he's getting very close to coming back. So when he comes back, well, where does he fit in to a rotation that seems to have no weak spots right now? We'll talk about that coming up as we continue today's episode of Locked on Phillies. Let me tell you about Policy Genius, though. You need to know about this. Everybody needs the proper insurance, and you need to find the best way to do it. Well, Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money, so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. I mean, you really have to use this because of the convenience, the time saving, like it's gonna save you money, but also time is money, right? You've heard that expression before. Well, Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to talk you through all the decisions you're going to have to make. You can talk to a team of award-winning agents who will walk you through the process step-by-step. Step. It's super easy to compare quotes from America's top insurers in just a few, few, few clicks <laughs> to find your lowest price available. Uh, they give you unbiased advice so you don't have to worry about them pushing you towards any specific insurance. No, they're just there to help you find the best possible deal and find it quickly and easily. So go ahead and check it out. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on MLB or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on MLB. So go ahead and check them out. I also want to tell you about our title sponsor, Monopoly Go. Monopoly Go is awesome. If you like the classic Monopoly Go, this is a or classic Monopoly. Monopoly Go is a great twist on that. There's a lot of cool new features while keeping the same thing you love about Monopoly, making money, trying to beat your friends, all of that stuff. If you've got a competitive side, you got to check out Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. You had to have because they have had over 150 million downloads, 150 million. That's a lot of people playing Monopoly Go. And you play on Monopoly Go, you've got not one, not two, no, hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations all built together in the app. You can build up amazing cities that bring you big money. The best part is you can play with your friends. You can either play against them and mess with them. You can play with them and try and build your empire together. There's a lot of ways to do it. And you got leaderboards to show you who the biggest and best Monopoly Go player is. You can do all of this stuff on the app. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now, free on the App Store or Google Play. So let's talk about the situation because it's kind of tricky. Taiwan Walker is nearing return for the Philadelphia Phillies. I don't know the exact date he's going to be back. I haven't heard anything like, oh, he's going to be free from his rehab assignment and ready for the majors on X date. But what I've been hearing via reports is that he's getting close it's not inside information. This is just stuff I'm reading. So you can go ahead and just look up the latest on Taiwan Walker, but he's getting close. He's feeling very good. And remember, this is a guy who had 15 wins last year for the Philadelphia Phillies, led the ball club, but also didn't pitch at all in the postseason. So in the biggest moments, the Phillies didn't really seem to trust him in those opportunities. That being said, Taiwan Walker is a guy who's been a starter for a long time at the major league level. And the Phillies made a sizable financial commitment to him, not this recent offseason, but the offseason before. So he doesn't seem like a candidate to me to go into the bullpen at any point. I just don't think that remotely makes sense for the type of pitcher that Taiwan Walker is. So what's your solution? 
you got to find a spot for him in the rotation. And right now, obviously, Wheeler, Nola, Suarez, not going anywhere. Those guys are unbelievable, all three of them. They've all had strong starts to the season. They're all top-level pitchers. They could all be Cy Young candidates in any given year, yes, including Ranger Suarez. He's been that good. But then you have Christopher Sanchez, who – Seems to have a high upside, has some good numbers, even though I was questioning his recent sharpness. Ended up with a great start yesterday, and he's been pretty darn good for the Philadelphia Phillies. And Spencer Turnbull has been lights out. I mean, the guy's been on a tear. His first couple starts of the year were locked down, scoreless. And, I mean, the guy's just been rock solid for the Philadelphia Phillies. Now, Turnbull was not brought in here to be a starter on the major league team, like right off the bat. He's here because of the Taiwan Walker injury. But has Spencer Turnbull done enough to earn a permanent spot in the rotation or at least a longer-term spot in the rotation? It's hard to say no. I mean, it really is. I don't know what more you could see from Spencer Turnbull to say, we want this guy in the rotation. So the easiest solution for the Philadelphia Phillies would be to say, hey, six-man rotation. A guy like Ricardo Pinto, uh, he goes to the minors, and then you have a six-man rotation. Tywan Walker takes that roster spot. You give everybody some extra rest early on in the season, so they're fresher later. But with that, with a six-man rotation, you take the risk of throwing guys out of rhythm. Pitchers are creatures of habit. I mean, I guess professional baseball players in general are creatures of habit. You have to be with 162 games. I mean, it's an off day today. This is why, by the way, a later episode, uh, because it's the first off day in two weeks. So that's not last Thursday, but the Thursday before that. So we've been on a long string of days straight play. That just shows you like you need to get in a rhythm to be a great baseball player. And when you add a sixth man to the rotation, you take guys out of their natural rhythm. So do you want to do that? Zach Wheeler in the past has already expressed a little bit of distaste for having an extra day of rest. He likes to get out there every fifth day. Now, Aaron Nola could like the extra day of rest. Ranger Suarez could like the extra day of rest. It's it's different for each pitcher, what they're comfortable with, and you're never going to find a solution that pleases everybody. So ultimately, you got to do what's best for the team from the manager's standpoint and Rob Thompson, the president of baseball operations standpoint and Dave Dombrowski, and that's something they're going to have to come to a determination on. The easiest thing would be, six-man rotation from a logistics standpoint, but that might not be the most beneficial thing for the team. Here's what I would guess, and it's not fair, and it's no poor reflection on this pitcher, but I think if Tywin Walker is going to take a spot, it would probably be Spencer Turnbull, simply because the sample size on him is not big enough to give you like full, full confidence in him to permanently be part of this rotation. I think he should be, right? But if you're looking at Walker, or Turnbull, there's a lot more track record behind Tywin Walker's ability than there is behind Spencer Turnbull's ability. So that would probably be the guy. Now, Turnbull's not going to go down, I don't think. I think they would shift him to the bullpen very similarly to what they did with Matt Strom last year. I've made that comparison between Strom and Turnbull multiple times. The difference is Ranger Suarez was out for like over a month. Tywin Walker has been out for, what is it, three weeks now at this point? So it's not the same time frame, but actually, you know, when I put the actual numbers on it, it's relatively close. I could see that being the move. Tywin Walker to the rotation, Turnbull to the bullpen, and then you have another arm that you trust, and the bullpen is going to end up being Turnbull, Kirkering, Hoffman, Soto, Dominguez, Alvarado, um, Strom, and I think I'm missing someone in there. Uh, yeah, but e- either way, you, you get what I'm saying. That's a pretty darn good bullpen. Like, that is a bullpen that you should feel very, very good about. And all of this is a good problem to have, right? Whatever it is, the pitchers are still going to be elite for the Philadelphia Phillies. Just something to keep your mind on as we draw closer to Taiwan Walker returning to this team. Now, I know the Phillies start a series with the White Sox tomorrow. On Friday, it's Citizens Bank Park rounding out this 10-game homestand with three games against Chicago. It's another very beatable team. We're going to get into that in tomorrow's episode. Tomorrow is going to be a full preview of that series with the Chicago White Sox. So you're going to want to check out tomorrow's episode to know, can the Phillies win another series? They're fourth in a row. 
can they potentially sweep back-to-back series? How bullish am I going to be on the Phillies' chances over the weekend? Well, you'll find out in tomorrow's episode, but because it's an off day, I have some random thoughts just drifting around in my head that I don't always get the chance to get to because we got to react to games and stuff like that. We're going to talk about that coming up uh, because it is an off day, and I have a little bit of free time with you guys. So some random Connors Philly thoughts as we wrap up today's episode of Locked on Phillies. And you know I got to tell you about prize picks first. I love prize picks, and a lot of other people do too. Prize picks is America's number one fantasy sports app. They've got more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. What did I tell you about yesterday's Phillies game? Lefties against uh, Ryan Feltner. Got a chance to pop off Kyle Schwarber, two home runs. Schwarber, I think I mentioned him specifically yesterday. So if you'd pick more on Schwarber home runs, you'd be watching the winnings roll in with prize picks. It's that easy. And I'm an idiot, right? If I can do this, you can do this. There's so many ways to win on prize picks. Baseball you got going on. You got the basketball playoffs. Uh, you got the hockey playoffs. You got everything going on. You might be bent strikeouts, RBIs, first inning runs. You just take your pick of more or less and add them to your prize picks entry Today, they've got everything. They're the best way to get action on sports in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, Georgia, and many more. So go ahead and check out Prize Picks. Uh, they're awesome. You download the app today and use code Locked On MLB. You'll get a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. One hundred dollars. That means you put one hundred dollars in your Prize Picks account. They give you a hundred more. Uh, what kind of a deal? Could you imagine, like? Having hundred dollars and one of your friends just gives you a hundred more dollars, like that would be your best friend. Prize pick should be your best friend when it comes to daily fantasy stuff. So go ahead and check it out again. Download the app today and use code locked on MLB. First deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right. Let, let me organize these thoughts a little bit. Let's start with um offensively. Nick Castellanos. Right now, this is the place I guess I got to start because I haven't mentioned him yet. He's the only qualified hitter in Major League Baseball without an extra base hit. Yeah, that's a problem, right? That is an all-time cold streak to start the season. Here's what I'll say. The whole it happens thing I don't think really applies here. This is a major slump for Nick Castellanos. Here's the good news. If you're a team like, I don't know, the Athletics or the Tigers or the Rockies who you just played or the White Sox who you're playing coming up and Castellanos is on your team, he might be one of your best offensive players. He might be the guy at the plate that you count on in the biggest spots, and that would be devastating. The Philadelphia Phillies are winning right now in spite of Castellanos' lack of production when it comes to his ability at the plate, power, anything in general. The Phillies are 11-8. and eight. They're three games over 500. They're only going up. They've got a winnable series against the White Sox. Like So I say all of that to say this. As bad as Cassianos has been at the plate, he's got time to figure it out because the rest of the offense is doing their job and the starting pitching has been so good. So kind of just he gets the benefit of being on a good team and taking time to figure it out. Will he? I strongly believe he will figure it out. Will he be an all-star this year? No, he's not going to be. But um, the good news is, Castellanos has time. His teammates have bought him time. You just got to cross your fingers and hope he comes out of it. Uh, that's as nice as I can be about the Castellanos at the plate right now. I still have faith in the guy. I do. Speaking of being an all-star this year, I've been tweeting it. I've been saying it. Brandon Marsh is absolutely going to be in all-star consideration this year. He's had an outstanding start to the year in left field for the Phillies. He's tearing the cover off the ball. He's hitting in big spots. He's making all the right decisions in the field. This dude is having the breakout year that I thought he was capable of having. We'll see if it continues. But I honestly, I'm incredibly encouraged by Brandon Marsh. As far as hitters go, I think he might have been, to this point in the season, the best player for the Philadelphia Phillies so far. Like He's definitely in the conversation for the guy that's carrying this team the most. So I feel great about where Brandon Marsh is at. Don't say I didn't warn you that he was going to have a year like this, but that's a great thing. Uh, Another thing, don't look now, Trey Turner, he's batting 329. He's only got two home runs and six RBIs, but my goodness, this dude is starting to figure it out. He's got four stolen bases on the year. That is tied for the lead on the ball club. And, I mean, you're starting to see the Trey Turner you went out and got. If he's hitting over 300 all year, 
with Bryce Harper hitting behind him, JT Romito, and the other guys that can drive in runs on this team, Alec Bohm, that's a great thing. Uh, and then one other thing, and all of these random thoughts are all offensive, because I can't say anything but good things about the starting pitching, and we highlight the starters all the time. But another check-in, Johan Rojas, my guy's up hitting 200. He has four stolen bases. He's got four walks, seven strikeouts on the year, which is not too high for the Philadelphia Phillies uh, comparison. I mean, there's other guys with more. Trey Turner has 18. Kyle Schwarber's got 25. Cassius 19. And I understand Rojas is playing less than some of those everyday players, but he's starting to figure it out a little bit at the plate. If he hits above the Mendoza line, that guy's your everyday center fielder. If he doesn't, he's still probably your most day center fielder. So this team is rounding into shape. If you're a Phillies fan, you should feel really good about where they're at right now. Now it's time to see what happens when this offense gets going regularly. And if this pitching stays the same, how high can their ceiling be? I'm thinking about three digits in the win column. I don't know if it's realistic, but I know that it's uh, something to think about. Still early in the season, still stuff to take care of, and tomorrow we'll talk about the series with the White Sox and see if they can continue to add to that win total. But that's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for checking us out. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Please make sure, again, you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube, all that great stuff. And I will talk to you tomorrow as we preview the series with the Chicago White Sox at Citizens Bank Park right here on the next episode of Locked On Phillies.